Hi there. Now, in this video, we're just going to look at part C then, where we've got to find the exact value of A for which G of A equals the inverse of G of A. And there's two ways that you could tackle this. One is a lot quicker and easier than the other. This is a very good question, I feel, that brings out quite a few important points about uh, inverse functions in relation to the actual function itself. I'll show you both these methods. In this video, I'll go for the quick one. And in the next video, I'll show you the uh, slightly alternative slower method. So what is this method? Well, it comes from the graphical approach. I'll show you. In this question, we should have seen that uh, when we were talking about the range of G, if you were to go back and check out that video, I drew the sketch of g of x. It looks something like this, okay, as a curve approaching 1, y equals 1. But what is the relationship between a function and its inverse? Well, we should be familiar with this, and that is that it's a reflection in the line y equals x. So if I was to draw that line y equals x in, it would look, say, something like this. And so if we were to reflect g of x in y equals x, it would look something like this, okay? But the very important point is this point here is going to pass through that point there. So this green graph then is the inverse of g of x. And if we're looking at finding this value of a where the g of a equals its inverse of a, then it must be this point here. This will be the point where x equals a. So if I was to come down here, be about that point there, that would be a. And if I was to go across there, that would be the point a there. So rather than work out what the inverse function of g of x is, and then substitute for x a and equate it with this equation where x is a and solve for a which is the other approach that we could do and I'll, as I say I've done that in the next video um, what we can do is say well okay we know that at this point here then x is a and y must be equal to a so what I'm saying is that g of a must equal a. Okay, not only is it going to be on the inverse function graph, but it's also going to be on y equals x. So we can see that when x is a, y will also be equal to a. And that's where I'm going with this. So I'll just put a note here that when g of a equals the inverse of g of a, we've got that therefore g of a must equal a because it lies on y equals x. And so therefore we get a nice easy equation to solve. We've got for g of a it's going to be a plus 1 over a minus 2. So a plus 1 over a minus 2. And that's going to be equal to the a here. And if I multiply both sides by a minus 2, we therefore get a plus 1 equals a squared minus 2a. And then all we need to do is rearrange this. We've got a quadratic equation looming up here. So what I'm going to do is keep this term positive. So we've got a squared. And then if I subtract a from both sides, we get minus 2a minus another a, which is minus 3a. And then if I subtract 1 from both sides, minus 1, and that equals 0. Now this doesn't factorise, and we're given a clue here anyway. It says find the exact value of a. And uh, that would seem to suggest that I've got to use the quadratic formula here. So using the quadratic formula, a would be equal to... And we're going to have minus minus 3, so that's 3, plus or minus the square root of the coefficient of this term squared. So that's minus 3 all squared. 
and then it's minus 4 times the coefficient of this term which is 1 times the constant here on the end minus 1 and that's all divided by twice the coefficient of this term here which is 1. Okay so you should be familiar with the quadratic formula there and tidying this up we end up with the 3 plus or minus and we've got here 9 plus 4 so that's going to be the root of 13 and that's all divided by 2. Now we've got two possible answers for a here 3 plus root 13 or 3 minus root 13 over 2. But it does say find the exact value of a that's singular so we're looking for one value and we get to know which value it is by looking at this point here x has to be greater than 3 and so since then x has to be greater than 3 now remember x is equal to a at this point here okay which is greater than 3 I can see that we're not going to need to take the negative option here the root of 13 is going to be 3 and a bit so I can see that 3 minus 3 and a bit is going to be a negative number so it's the positive value we need so therefore I can see that a will be equal to 3 plus the square root of 13 then all divided by 2 so that to me is the way that uh, is easiest to do but in, as I say in the next video what I'll do is I'll show you the alternative way which is to work out what the inverse function of g of x is and then once we've done that we can equate the two equations together so if you want to have a look at that then it follows this video.